Most of us take a very reactive approach to self-care if we have any approach at all. And by that I mean we don't pay much attention to it until we're already tired and really need self-care and then we rest in reaction to that feeling. And that reactive approach might be enough to stave off burnout sometimes, but it is not a sustainable strategy for avoiding and preventing burnout. That part becomes a lot easier when you figure out how to take a proactive approach instead of a reactive one. So in this video, we are going to talk about how you can create a self-care plan to prevent that burnout. Hello, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am Brittany, the founder here at Work Brighter, and I am here to help productive unicorns like you escape hustle culture. And if you want a free workbook or Notion template to create your own self-care plan, check out the link in the description below because I created one to go along with this video. So if you download it now, you can fill it out along with me as I walk you through it. Now, let's talk about that burnout prevention self-care plan. Like I said before, once you notice those warning signs that your body sends you, those signs telling you that you need a break from work, from working out, from whatever it is that's draining your energy, once you do that, you can start taking a more proactive approach to self-care. And that means you will be able to do something about your low energy levels while they're still low and not completely depleted 0%. So the first step that I want you to do in creating your self-care plan is to try and identify what those warning signs are. Think about what signs you can look out for that tell you you might need to pay a little bit closer attention to your rest, to your mental health, to your physical health, all of that. And I like to group these into sensational warnings and situational warnings. Situational warnings are situations, scenarios, events, etc. that you know are going to deplete you of a lot of energy. And by identifying them, you can start making sure that you leave a lot of room for rest afterwards. For example, for me, that is video. Whether we are talking just a regular Zoom meeting or recording a YouTube video like this, the more time that I spend talking, whether it's to a person or to a camera, the more time I need rest afterwards. So the more talking and socializing and projecting that I need to do in a day, the shorter that that workday needs to be and the more recovery I need to build in afterwards. So those are situational warnings. Then there are also sensational warnings, which are based more in different emotions or feelings or senses. These may be different ways that you personally feel burned burnout or exhaustion or chronic stress or all of these things that just tell you that your body needs a little bit more TLC than usual. So think about the ways that you know based on your past experience that things like stress and depression and anxiety and overwhelm show up in your own body and mind. This is all a very personal thing, so it's important that we do this for ourselves. So for me, it might be things like sore muscles, headaches, trouble sleeping at the right time of day at least, feeling antsy, and a lot more. <laughs> These are all feelings that I know when I don't pay attention to them only get worse and eventually lead to me burning out completely. But now that I do know how to pay attention to them, I can take them as signs, make changes based on them, and hopefully burn out less. And so having these signs are really helpful. So now I want you to pick out and try to identify a few warnings from both the sensational and situational category. Once you do that, I would love to hear what you have identified in the comments below. So once you have done that, step two of your self-care plan is to assemble your support squad because it might be called self-care, but that doesn't mean that you got to do it on your own. Yes, I I know how cheesy that was. I know, I know. Well, moving on. Anyway, other people and other things or tools can and should be part of your self-care plan. So in this step of the burnout prevention plan, I want you to think of what I like to call a self-care first aid kit. First, there are your self-care cheerleaders. These are the people that you know that are in your life that you can count on to help you prioritize yourself when you need to. That might be tangible support, like actually taking some of the work off of your plate 
Or it just might be emotional support, making you feel better when you're down. These might be your funniest friend that you know you can FaceTime when you need a smile when you're feeling down. It might be your most organized friend that you know can help you make a budget when you're feeling stressed out about finances. Uh, it can also be things like the people in your household, whether that's your family members or your roommates. Uh, they can help pick up some slack around the house with chores when you're feeling burnt out and you can do the same for them. The same is true of any coworkers you have. Hopefully you have the kind of coworkers that you can trust to be in your self-care support squad and that you know if you are ever feeling really stressed out beyond the normal levels the job entails that they will step in and want to help and hopefully you want to do the same for them. I do understand that that's not everyone's situation though so that's just you know a suggestion if it's applicable. And then aside from your self-care cheerleaders you've got your what I like to call warm fuzzy feeling inducers. These are the tools and supplies and like inanimate objects and stuff that can help you regain energy or just feel good when you're feeling depleted. Think about both physical and emotional energy. So these might be things like a hot bath and comfy pajamas when you're feeling really exhausted, but it also might be things like your absolute favorite TV shows, movies, YouTube videos, and stuff like that that make you laugh when you're feeling stressed. It is also definitely any pets or small tiny humans that you can cuddle. Tiny pets and humans are kind of hybrid. They're, they're both warm fuzzy feeling inducers and care cheerleaders. I like to call this my smile file and I even have it literally documented in Notion because of course I do. So comment below and let me know what your all time favorite TV shows and movies are for when you are in need of a chuckle and maybe I can add those to my smile file too. Step three of creating your burnout prevention plan is to start thinking about setting boundaries. And I know a lot of people don't like the idea of boundaries because it feels restricting. But the analogy that I like to give for boundaries is that they're not like a brick wall. Burnout is the brick wall. Boundaries are that bumper on the side of the road before the brick wall that keep you from hitting it. Because if you hit a brick wall, you are going to crash and it is going to hurt. But if there is a bumper in front of that wall made up of a softer material, that is there to protect you and make it so that you do not crash and it does not hurt as much. So think of burnout as crashing into that brick wall and the boundaries as that bumper that in comparison only hurts a little. And your boundaries are that softer bumper that's there to protect you before you crash. And in order to respect your body's bumpers and boundaries and limits, it is important to know what they are. You've definitely experienced them before, but you might not have known it. You might not have been able to, in the moment, identify them as the burnout warning signs that they were. And we have boundaries in all types of different activities with all types of different energies. There's a limit on how much creative work you can do in a given period, how much physical work you can do in a given period, how much exercising you can do, how much socializing you can do. Any type of activity, you can only do so much of it before you need a break. So some good places to start identifying boundaries are identifying things for all of those different types of energies. Creative energy. How much creative work can you do before you know you start to feel exhausted? Socializing. How much can you socialize before your energy starts to deplete? And that'll be totally different whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Think about physical work boundaries, strategic work boundaries. All of it is important. The more that you can identify and understand yourself, the the better. So once you identify a few boundaries for yourself in a few different categories, I want you to put them in the comments below because I know this part can be hard and I want the comments section to just be like overflowing with awesome ideas and inspiration. That is step three and now step four is to plan happier habits because it's already a huge accomplishment to start recognizing your boundaries. It's a whole other ball game to start respecting them and following them and knowing what to do about them. That's where we're at now. Now. And in real life, this means things like knowing when to just close your laptop and call it a day on work, even if there's more you quote unquote should be doing. It means knowing when not to finish that virtual spin class that you're doing because you push yourself too hard and it's time to jump ahead to the cool down. And a great way for giving yourself permission to do this in the future is coming up for plan B's or alternatives. Having go-to replacements for these activities 
keys when you need them because it's so much easier to stop doing one thing that you're in the groove of and enjoy when you have another thing that you can get into the groove of and enjoy to turn to. All of the stuff about habits backs this up that it's easier to stop one habit when you have another to replace it with. I talk about this in the happy habits videos. So in the work brighter verse, we call these specific kinds of habits happy habits because happy habits aren't just good or healthy for you and they aren't just fun. They're both. They're good for you and you enjoy them. So in this step, I want you to think about some activities that you can build habits around to be your go-tos when you have hit those boundaries that we've talked about in step three. If you're looking for more specific help with this, you might wanna check out the Happy Habits Toolkit in the Work Writer Shop. But to start, here are a few prompts to consider filling out. Think of this like fill in the blank style. When I'm feeling overwhelmed, I tend to ABC, but instead I can XYZ. When I'm anxious, I tend to ABC, instead I can XYZ. You get the idea. So repeat that prompt structure with different types of boundaries and warning signs that you've already identified earlier in the self care plan. So for things like feeling depressed, anxious, overwhelmed, angry, unfocused. The, the worksheet that goes along with this video has a bunch of suggestions. And if you share in the comments, that'll also get another great flow of inspiration going. And that is the gist of creating your self-care plan, your burnout prevention plan, your smile file. What other names did I come up with in this? Anyway, that is the steps to come up with it. But step five is to actually stick to it. And it'll come a little later. And and you might not do it well at first. Resting takes practice, as counterintuitive as it sounds. The reason a lot of us aren't great at resting is because we've been taught not to value it and that we are like weak or a failure if we need it. So of course we're not good at it. But like I always say in Work Writer, rest is work. It is a skill to be learned. And it's not always easy when you've spent your whole life living the opposite way of prioritizing rest. And so it's really important that I want you to celebrate any progress you make. Anytime you find yourself sticking to your boundaries, to stopping something before you're completely depleted of energy, uh, respecting your own body and mind's energy over someone else's priorities. Celebrate that. If you don't have anyone to celebrate with you, hell, I will. Send me a DM on Instagram. Tell me about how you're prioritizing rest. I would love to hear it and cheer you on. And if you want a whole self-care cheerleading squad rooting their pom-poms for you, you might want to check out the work writer clubhouse because that's kind of exactly what it is. And now before I let you go, comment below and promise me that you are going to start taking a more proactive approach to self-care and preventing burnout. And remember that if you need help documenting your plan or creating your plan, check the link in the description below. And if you're in a binge mode mood, you might want to watch some of these videos about self-care next, starting with my favorite self-care book recommendations. Bye-bye and have a brighter week.